In the most recent video that I uploaded, I talked all about stress. Now, when you think of stress, you probably think of being in depth, fighting with a partner. There are so many different stressors that we could be going through and our body could still be responding to without us even realizing it. Now, I really went in depth in that video so you can understand all of the different stressors that our body responds to and how it affects our health. But in this video, I just want to talk about chemical stress. Now, we have three different kinds of stressors. We have chemical, we have emotional, and we have physical. I'm going to talk all about the chemical stressors and heavy metals that we are being exposed to. Then I'm going to make shorter videos going more in depth on certain topics so that you can remember everything and you could just click on these short videos whenever you want to kind of remind yourself about this information. If you look at our population today, health conditions and diseases are rising every year. Even health conditions are appearing that never even existed before. Even children are dealing with diabetes and obesity. And just because these health conditions are on the rise every year, I don't think that we should normalize it. And I think that we should really take our health more seriously. If you want your children and your family to be healthier, then really watch this video and actually implement these things that I'm sharing with you because you can skip through this right now or you could watch some of it and be like, great, that was great tips and then move on with your day and not make any changes. It's when you apply this information to your life is when your life is really going to start changing. So why is chemical stress so detrimental to our health? because it has what's called a neurotoxic effect. Now, a neurotoxin is basically a poison. And this poison disrupts and alters the function between our brain cells and our nerves. And this is the communication pathway. Our brain cells are communicating with our nerves because our nervous system is what coordinates and functions everything in the body. And the more that we are exposed to these chemicals and pollutants, what happens? It accelerates the rate on which our nerve and brain cells degrade and die. And disorders that are associated with this toxic exposure are impaired intelligence, impaired regulation of emotional responses, behavioral problems including attention deficit, and hyperactivity disorders, depression, anxiety, memory formation, impaired physical coordination, an increased risk of neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. And we have all of these different toxins and heavy metals that we're being exposed to in our food and around us in our environment on a daily basis that are throwing off our hormones, weakening our immune system and nervous system, reduces our ability to absorb nutrients that are draining us from our physical and mental energy. And you see so many people nowadays that are deficit in vitamins and relying on all of these supplements. Instead of taking all of these detox juices and trying to find ways to detox the body, I think it's very important first to eliminate the amount of toxins that you are exposed to because what you don't put in your body, you won't have to worry too much about eliminating. So what you don't put in, you don't got to focus too much on putting out. So first, let's try to evaluate our lifestyle and see what we can eliminate first. Now we have different heavy metals that we're being exposed to that displace these vitamins in our body and cause us to be deficit. These heavy metals include lead, cadmium, arsenic, and mercury. Lead likes to displace calcium in the body. Cadmium and arsenic displace zinc, and mercury displaces magnesium. So now let's go through all of the different things that we're being exposed to in our environment when it comes to heavy metals and all these different chemicals and toxins. Now the first one that I want to go into is the kitchen, the pans that you are cooking with, believe it or not. A lot of people don't know when you go and you get that pan that's non-stick, the one that made life so much easier to clean when actually all of these chemicals are being released into your food. I see people sometimes when they're cooking and they're in a rush, they cook with a fork or with a knife and it's being scraped. Sometimes the food gets burnt on the pan and you're just like, oh, you don't even pay attention and you overuse it even when it's being cooked in high temperatures and you see the smoke come out. All of these different things, what's happening? They're letting all these chemicals being released into our food and we're inhaling these chemicals as well. 
So what are the pans that you should avoid and what are the pans that are going to be the safest ones for you to cook with? So the ones that should completely be avoided are ceramic coated, non-stick, Teflon, aluminum, and copper. Instead, you want to use enabled cast iron, bare cast iron, glass, titanium, and lead-free ceramic. The next one is plastic, and we're being exposed to a lot of plastic when we order food from outside. They put the hot food inside of the plastic containers, which helps the chemicals release even more. The Tupperwares that we're using in our kitchen when we're storing foods, eating from plastic knives and forks, drinking from plastic bottled water, especially if you're leaving it in your car, that's a huge no-no. I hope you already know that, because by now I think everyone should know that. Even when you take the bottle out of the car that's just been sitting there for an hour and you drink the water, you can even feel that it, you can even taste that it tastes a little bit different. And these plastics are not only polluting our environment and killing our animals, but they're also impairing our immunity. This is not to freak you out. This is just to help you make some changes. Throw away the plastic, get the glass. Next time you go grocery shopping for some new pans, just change the kind of pans that you're gonna buy. Yes, you're gonna invest a little bit of more money, but now you're eliminating your exposure to the amount of chemicals that we're being exposed to on a daily basis. And this is the most important thing. It's not about perfection. It's not about obsession. It's about what changes can I make? You know, okay, I'm gonna pay a little bit more, but this ultimately is what's gonna make me so much healthier, make my immune system so much stronger, and it's also gonna teach my family how to make better, healthier decisions. The next one is smoking. I hate to break it to you guys, but it's not only for the people that are smoking the cigarettes. You have first-hand smokers, which the person who's smoking the cigarette, second-hand smoke, the people that are around you that are smoking, and the third-hand smoke, is the smoke that gets stuck into all the furniture that's around you, your couches, your curtains. And for some people that are heavy smokers, they find it difficult to heal their body when they're sick. The reason for that is because there's 15 different toxic chemicals that are found in cigarettes. And they are abundant of heavy metals, of cadmium and arsenic inside of these cigarettes. And like I mentioned in the beginning, these heavy metals will displace certain vitamins. And these kind of heavy metals that are in cigarettes, they displace zinc. And zinc is one of the main vitamins that helps your body heal. The next one is medication and antibiotics. And I'm not talking about the medication that's over the counter. I'm talking about these regular pills that you go get when you go to the pharmacy, when you're in pain, when you're sick, like Advil and Tylenol. These medicines actually have the most neurotoxic chemical in them called paracetamol. Now medications and antibiotics, they do have their place in certain situations, but I just feel like doctors nowadays, they're over abusing it. And they're not really paying attention to the person's lifestyle and being able to help them heal naturally. I'm sure now if you go to a doctor and it's not a functional medicine doctor, if they cannot give you medication or they cannot give you surgery, they don't really help you much. And I don't think the right way to look at it is as soon as that we're in pain, that our body is deficit in certain chemicals or if there's some type of inflammation that we need to take steroids or if we're feeling sad that we need to take antidepressants. All of these chemicals, they're destroying our physiology. They're destroying our gut health and our brain cells and our nervous system. So whenever you're going through something, instead of just listening to what the doctor tells you and provides you, it doesn't mean just because he's a doctor or she's a doctor that they're necessarily you know, giving you the right answer. I think it's better to look at a functional medicine doctor that can first pay attention to everything in your life and see where is this problem coming from first making the right test to determine exactly what you need naturally before trying to take anything and put anything that's chemicals into your body first. If you just turn the bottle around and see all of the different side effects, you will automatically know that this isn't healthy for your body. I don't have to tell you that. You can just read the back of the bottle and you will know. For people who take antidepressants, some of those side effects are actually suicidal where they want to kill themselves. It makes it where it gets worse in the long run. 
So when you take the medication, you feel like, okay, it's helping me right now because it's just changing your physiology and your body, but it's not actually fixing the problem from the beginning. And what's gonna happen? It's only gonna make matters worse. And that's why people who take medication, the doctor ends up telling them after a couple of months, oh, well, now you need to take another medication. Why? Because other parts in your body are being affected by these chemicals now, that now your body has to rely on other medications in order to try to create this balance that's not even creating a balance, it's just a creating more of an imbalance in your body. The next one is preservatives and artificial ingredients. You could look at almost any box right now in the grocery store and you look at the ingredients, you'll most likely find preservatives and artificial ingredients and they will trick you with their food labels, low in fat, low in sugar, no GMO. And you'll be like, oh my God, this is amazing, dairy-free, gluten-free. And we just really don't understand all of these terms and we don't know all of the ingredients. So when we see these labels, we're like, oh, gluten-free, that's amazing, that must be healthy. And that's how they trick you. Now, the reason why these are unhealthy is because they're foreign to the body. The body doesn't know what it is. It's not natural for the body. So when we digest these foods into our body, our body tags it as an invader. It's like, this is foreign to the body. We don't know what this chemical is. So it starts to create inflammation. And that's why you see a lot of people now are dealing with so many gut health issues that people weren't dealing with in the past. People are even eating healthy food and they're starting to get bloated because of how it's affecting their digestive system, their immune system, all of the different gut bacterias and their microbiome. So that's why it's not just about, I need to lose weight, I need to get a six pack, I have cellulite. Okay, there are many different things that we want to focus on and progress on, yeah? But don't forget about all of these little foods that you could be eating where you might still be losing weight, but it's causing you to be unhealthier in the long run. All of these candy bars that trick you, these protein snack bars, this meal replacement bars, all have these artificial ingredients, flavor and preservatives that are just causing you to be unhealthier. And you're trying to make choices right now to be healthier, right? You want to get fit, you want to get lean, you want that stomach to be flat, you want to have energy, you want to feel good. Then this is one of the first things that you have to eliminate from your diet that will allow you to have that positive energy, to feel good and to appreciate healthy food and to have a more positive relationship with food and not feel like, you know what, eating an apple or eating fruits doesn't really taste that good. All of these foods are altering your taste buds, are making you depreciate the food that, the natural food that we're supposed to be eating. So in the beginning, it might feel like, yeah, but this tastes so much better and a salad or a fruit salad isn't sweet enough. I have a sweet tooth. It's because you're altering those taste buds. Your body is so used to these chemicals now, your tongue is immune to it, that you can't even appreciate the natural taste inside of food. So it's not about all of these processed and packaged foods that they're trying to fool you with that have protein and you know uh, gluten-free and all this stuff that's tricking you into eating these foods that are addictive. They put these additives, they put these preservatives in there that actually make you more addicted to the food. And a lot of people feel like, I don't have the willpower, I have to eat this, you know what I mean? because they think that it's their personality, when really these foods could be causing you hormonal imbalances that are making you feel addicted to these kind of foods. And once you're aware how it's affecting your mind, affecting your hormones, affecting your health, it will motivate you to take it more seriously and make better choices in life. I hope so. <laughs> The next one is non-organic produce. I'm sure you probably walked by the grocery store, saw that organic section, saw the prices, and you were like, I'm not gonna be buying all my produce with that price. <laughs> now, the reason why people buy organic, it's not because they're trying to trick you to spend more money, because non-organic produce is being sprayed. All of the produce, the vegetables, the fruits, the legumes, the grains, they spray them with what's called pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides in order to protect them from bacteria and insects. But the problem with this, that it destroys our gut health. It has endocrine disruptors where it causes hormonal imbalances. Now, not all 
fruits and vegetables, you have to buy organic. There are certain vegetables and fruits that are on top of the list that you should definitely buy organic. So I'm gonna be doing separate videos where I have to go more in depth into these topics. And I'm gonna share with you one by one so you could just click on these short videos, play them back if you need to, so you can remember all of them. The next one is GMO foods. I'm sure you've seen GMO on some of the packaged food labels where they say this is free from GMO and they kind of trick you there because they think, okay, it's free from this, but then it has everything else that you're not aware of. The thing is with genetically modified foods is that they also spray them with these kind of herbicides that I mentioned with the non-organic produce. And in restaurants and packaged foods, they're not going to be using organic fruits, vegetables, and grains. They're most likely gonna be using the cheapest kind of crops and that's gonna be the genetically modified crops. The next one is our fish. A lot of the rivers, lakes, and ocean supply are being contaminated with all of these chemicals that are being released from industrial factories and the waters are being polluted that are causing heavy metals like mercury and lead that are getting inside of the fish that we're eating. So there are a couple of things that we want to look into when we want to choose the right fish. We want to make sure that we get the fish that are the highest in nutrients, the ones that are higher in omega-3, so that we have the right ratio between omega-3 and omega-6. I'm going to do a longer video separated, so I'm going to detail every single fish, the ones to avoid, the ones that are the best to choose. But just to kind of give you some overall information, the ones that we do want to choose are going to be the highest in the nutrients and omega-3. We want to make sure that we choose smaller fish because the larger fish are the ones that live longer. So they're going to be more concentrated with these kind of heavy metals. We want to choose the right fish coming from the right areas of the world and not areas that are, have the most contamination. And we also want to look at the overall sustainability as well. So the larger fishes are gonna be like shark, and shark also eat other fishes that are concentrated in these heavy metals as well. Another one is gonna be tuna, but if you wanna choose tuna, you wanna make sure that you choose yellowfin tuna because it comes from a part of the world that doesn't have as much heavy metals. But stay away from the albacore tuna and try to stick to the light tuna. Tilapia is like the worst one. All tilapia fish are all farmed fish and we wanna stay away from farmed fish. We wanna get the natural growing fish from the ocean that are eating a natural diet like they're supposed to. Swordfish is also another one that's very high in mercury. We also wanna be careful with the fish that are at the bottom of the sea because we have these industrial chemicals in the air from our everyday factories and these toxins are heavier and they end up going to the bottom of the water. And this will affect fish like eel, sea trout, sea bass. So the kind of fish that you wanna get, one is wild caught salmon. So whenever you go buy the salmon, ask them, say is this wild caught or farmed? Most restaurants, probably all of them, they're not gonna be using wild caught. Most of the time they're all using farmed. I ask every time I go, I'm like, is it wild caught or is it farmed? Now the reason for this is because they have soft tissue. They're not, they're very low in any heavy metals. They're very high in omega-3 fatty acids. They're high in selenium. They're high in B vitamin B12. The next one is sardines. Now you might be kind of oohed out by sardines, right? They actually taste really good. If you put them on toast, you put some lemon on top of it, you can even cook it sometimes. It tastes really good surprisingly, and it's very high in copper, selenium, and omega-3. Yes, it's in a can, but if you choose the one with oil, then the fish is gonna be protected from any metals that could be released from the can. The last one is mussels. Mussels are super high in protein. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids, they're high in selenium, and they're high in trace minerals. The next one is meats. Now, when you choose your meats, try to get your meats from a local farm that you can trust that's being ethically raised. Now, on top of that, you wanna make sure that your meats are not getting fed genetically modified food and not getting fed grains. Most of the time, they're feeding the cows with grains. You want them to have a natural diet where they're getting fed grass-fed. So that's why when you look at the meat, you've probably seen grass-fed before, but you didn't really understand what was the difference. 
That's the difference. You don't want them eating genetically modified food that's being sprayed with these herbicides. On top of that, you don't want to get meat that has been injected with hormones, injected with antibiotics. Now, when they're living in an area where they're locked up in cages, majority of the time they get sick and this is why they inject them with antibiotics and that's why you see a lot of the girls nowadays they're getting their periods their menstrual cycles much younger they're growing much faster they're having these hormonal imbalances this is due to the kind of meat that people are eating the kind of milk even milk is not even healthy but that's a whole nother topic but if you were to eat meat if you're not a vegan and you are eating meat try to get meat that's say antibiotic free grass-fed and hormone-free, preferably halal, so you know that it's ethically raised. And the last one are all of these supplies that are around us in our house, like our creams, makeup, shampoo, hairspray, the kids' toys, the cleaning supplies. All of these have chemicals and toxins that we're being exposed to on a daily basis. So it's not to be picky and freak out and say, oh my God, so what am I supposed to do? I have all of this stuff that's around me. It's about making healthier choices when it comes to your foods, when it comes to the things that you can eliminate and the things that you can decrease. If you're to get candles, instead of just buying any candles, try to find candles that don't have these chemical toxins that are being released. You know, when you put that candle out and all that smoke comes out, those are chemicals. There is some store in the mall, I forgot what it's called, but they actually sell candles that don't release those kind of heavy metals. And it's just trying to decrease the amount that you're exposed to on a daily basis, that's all. In the upcoming videos, I'm gonna be doing a series about stress. Today, I talked about chemical stress. The next one, I wanna share with you ways to detox your body from these chemicals. If you've been exposed to all of these toxins and chemicals in your life, how can you get rid of it? How can you detox your body? The next videos, I'm gonna talk about emotional and physical stress, ways to eliminate it, exercises that you can implement to reduce all of these stresses in your life. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or if there's anything that you would like me to talk about, please leave a comment below.